Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You. Today I have with me Mr. Pradeep Bajal, who was the former chairman of the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India. And he's a published author of several books. We are talking to him about his last book, which is containing the China onslaught. We've already done two episodes in the series with Mr. Bajal. The first one was on China and the background for its growth. The second one was on China's behavior. And this episode, we're going to take Mr. Bajal's views on what are the ideas to tame China and who will win. So Mr. Bajal, thank you once again. You spoke about the Industrial Revolution 4.0 and 5.0, which is going to probably drive the next few decades. Tell me what are your thoughts? You see, it's very interesting. <clears throat> Uh, let me uh, go a little behind. Mm -hmm. You know, when I started writing this book, mm -hmm. that was about five years back, what did I write on? I wrote that China and America are partners mm -hmm. in uh, growth in China and growth in uh, America. Mm -hmm. And who's against China and America? Uh, basically, India, Japan, some other democracies uh, on the frame. Mm -hmm. And uh, therefore, the original draft of the book was, as I said, China and America versus the democracies. Correct. Now, as I uh, wrote the book, Trump issued his uh, election manifesto. Correct. And the election manifesto said very strongly of what we said in the book. What did we say in the book? That China is taking advantage of Russia and is growing very fast right. and is pressurizing other nations. Mm -hmm. Then, when I wrote the book and I gave some interviews like yours, I think much was happening and then suddenly came Corona. Mm -hmm. And with Corona, the world changed again. Right. And now you have come to the next election of uh, Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> the issue is whether the world has understood the problems with a very strong China, who's pressurizing all countries. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that we have gone through Industrial Revolution 1, Industrial Revolution 2, Industrial Revolution 3. Mm -hmm. 3 has reversed the trend of Industrial Revolution 1 and 2. Correct. What will happen in 4 and 5? After mm -hmm. all, 4 and 5 are also like Industrial Revolution 3. The technology is the same. Technology is in wire or wireless. Technology in interconnectivity and technology is on connecting the world, and technology is uh, globalization. Mm. So now we have to see how the politics of different countries will behave in the present pluses and minuses of uh, China. Correct. Correct. That's interesting. So, you know, you just spoke a little bit about COVID. I know that COVID has had a major impact on almost all countries. But the message that seems to be coming out of China is that things are back to normal. What are your thoughts on this, sir? Well, number one, uh, I have also gone through the news reports that you have gone through. Correct. And uh, a number of news reports say, no, this is not true, the second phase has started, etc., etc. Mm. Now, COVID or Corona might have been controlled in China, might not have been controlled in China, that is not right. Mm. What is relevant is that a number of stories have come and they say that uh, Corona was initiated by China mm. and it's an artificial Corona. Right. Now, I, I read somewhere that WHO has appointed a committee headed by the past Prime Minister of New Zealand and it will try and find out what's happening because it should not be difficult yeah. to find out what happened. Right. Now, that is very important. I don't know which way the world politics would go. Mm -hmm. But with Trump in the United States, mm -hmm. the action against China is much more strong. Correct. So, you know, so in the first two episodes, we've spoken about the power of China, the huge amounts of investments that America has put into China. But what we are beginning to see in the post-COVID is at least and some steps to start decoupling with China. I mean, you know, I was reading about Japan setting up a huge fund to be able to move Japanese companies out of uh, China. Korea has started doing that. America openly is talking about it. Where they go is not the issue. My question to you is, how much can the world really 
afford to decouple given the fact that china is really in the blood stream of every country yes now the processes have become more global hmm. some part is manufactured in china some is manufactured in united states some is manufactured in india and they are right. joined together etc yeah. so many times when we said that we will get out of hawaii then people are saying how will you get out of hawaii this comes from hawaii that comes from hawaii etc etc and the 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 policy even the policy being pursued in different countries do not give you a uniform message that you are getting out of china different countries are getting out of china mm. so uh, this will only be determined in the future mm. now but the technologies are such i have four and i have five technologies are such mm. the things will positively change mm. why are they different they are different because these technologies are also on the wire and the wireless and we know very well that indians have done very well in the 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 uh, it technologies and the mobile technologies and the smartphone technologies etc etc so it is too premature to judge where the world will go forward even in japan there are indication that they are thinking of getting out but they have problems in getting out mm. if you look at the invest the american investment in uh, china they have increased Now, how will the future uh, behave? I don't know because corporations don't act according to the interest of the nation. They mostly act according to the uh, interest of the shareholders, and it means the profit. Mm. So it's too premature to find out. But there are two things which are very interesting, mm. and those are that in the month of November you have the election for Trump, and that is frightfully interesting because. Trump has taken an open position against China, China, whereas the Republican candidate has taken an open position, which is cooperation with everyone. Correct. So, what the world is thinking, what America is thinking, will be determined in November mm. in the United States. Though I am not saying that if Biden comes, mm. it will be uh, it will be pro-China. I am not saying that even Biden may go for anti-China policy, but. Trump has taken an open position for the last four or five years. Right. So that is number one. Number two, the the next session mm. in China mm. of some kind of Politburo group is also in November, mm. and uh, in that session, mm. many decisions will be taken, and that will show whether Z is losing power or gaining power. Correct. After all, you fully know that even in the Even in China, people can gain power. People can lose power. After all, Deng yes. uh, gained power and lost power at various stages. And the same thing had happened to Mao, mm. to Rarely. So, all these countries, what ultimately determines is the will of the people. Mm. And the will of the people in November mm. in China mm. and in USA, whether it will be more in favor of China. Or not in favor of China will be determined, and all of us will know better today. It is premature to make a judgment. Correct, I agree with you. But coming to China, you know, uh, I've been reading some articles uh, that there are a lot of rumblings within the Chinese Communist Party, and that there are some generals who are openly coming out. And yet, I was reading about uh, a purge that is beginning to start. You know, you are, yes, yes. You are fully aware that all these rumblings mm. have started coming recently. Correct. And even Hong Kong, lots mm. of things are happening. Mm. And even even Deng's son, mm. I had read articles, is a pro-democrat uh, leader in China. Okay. So whether democracy is getting powerful, whether whether a fascist government is getting powerful, whether Z is converting himself. Whether so many countries back down when there is opposition, is China going to back down? I think all uh, we'll have another session in November, and we'll have the answers. Well, I agree with you. So you know, uh, I was reading some of your notes, and uh, you know, also reading a lot about what President Xi is doing. He is constantly calling upon the teachings of Mao, which is absolutely understandable, but. i was reading somewhere and i was talking to friends in china like mao's red book 
there is now Xi Jinping's book, which every teacher is supposed to have on their table in school. Is this a transition that's beginning to happen from Mao to Deng to Xi, uh, with everyone else in between forgotten? Well, that happens in all communist countries, all uh, dictatorial countries. Uh -huh. That the leader uh, appears everywhere, and the strength of democracy is mm -hmm. even the others are hurt. Now, in the in the uh, even in 1949, mm -hmm. uh, it was said the Comrade Mao had said mm -hmm. that today is the day to go to Beijing to take an exam. Mm -hmm. You know, we have won the war, 1949 war, now we are going to be beginning to take the, the exam. Mm -hmm. And recently some leaders also said that now other exams are coming, whether we have removed corruption, whether uh, we become stronger. There are some very interesting indications, mm -hmm. in, in, uh, which are positive for China. Mm -hmm. China has started investing a lot mm -hmm. in uh, mass investments in uh, the United States. Mm -hmm. Recently, they made a lot of investments in the sick automobile industry of Detroit. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have some given data, mm -hmm. given data on that. They have they've in invested a lot on the biggest uh, pork farm in, mm -hmm. the, in the United States. Right. So it will all depend if the if the conditions become normal or if countries mutually give uh, assurance to each other, there might be more cooperation between China and America, with uh, America getting far more advantages. But generally, uh, it appears that uh, the position is not so. It is only so in published uh, journals. Mm -hmm. One last point I'd like to mention before we walk away. Mm -hmm. You see, in 1989, the reforms uh, had matured mm -hmm. both in uh, China and also in India. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of reforms, there was a lot of uh, agitation, all kinds of reforms. There was lots of agitation both in China and in India. In China, the main agitation was Tiananmen Square. Mm. On one side, you had uh, the forces, the Muslovian forces asking for more freedom. Correct. And in India, you started having more activity in Kashmir. Both. In 89, you had the uh, you had uh, Tiananmen. And in 1990, you had the Hindu exodus Correct. from uh, from Kashmir. And when we had the Hindu exodus from Kashmir, there were loud noises which said nothing. Mm. You tolerated, you accepted as a, as a polity, mm. you accepted the Hindu exodus mm. in one state of India. Mm. And you were trying to come to a balance. And for so many years, you have tried to come to a balance with the Hindu exodus. I've heard leaders saying, yeah, we are such a big country. We are such a powerful country. One Muslim state in India doesn't matter. Hmm. What was attempted was that one state becomes a Muslim state the, in the Hindu exodus. But now the reactions are different. Hmm. Now a lot has happened in Kashmir. Hmm. Now a lot has happened for the first time in Kashmir hmm. after 70 years. Correct. After 70 years of 370, after 70 yeah. years of 15 years. So today the Indian state is much different from the earlier harmless Indian state. Correct. And the, the, the Indian electorate also sees, used to see the state as a harmless state. Mm. I don't know whether it is good or bad for a mm. democracy, but it was a harmless Indian state. Even China said that, look, this country, you can do everything. In China, in the, in the, in the, in the in one state, the, the, the Uyghurs, the, mm -hmm. the Muslim population, mm -hmm. the large Muslim population is almost in prison. Correct. So uh, these are very strong forces and those forces, what will happen to those forces will also be determined. Mm -hmm. In India, at present, it seems that we have an advantage. In China, it appears that there is a disadvantage. There is international dissatisfaction, 
there is uh, hong kong dissatisfaction there is the uyghurs dissatisfaction so what will happen it appears that india has an advantage and china does not but the next two months will tell you the answer so so i got two more questions before we conclude our series my first question is on corruption in china when uh, president xi jinping came to power 7 years ago he was really he came in on the platform of corruption in that he would clean everything up and he did clean up everything but talking to a lot of friends in china what really happened was that corrupt people in china were replaced by corrupt people who were loyal to the leadership now corruption hasn't changed in china any thoughts or comments from you you see z in a recent lecture hmm. had said that we have become very casual correct we have become casual towards corruption and our future will depend on the future of corruption in china hmm. now i don't believe that we should we should take anything on the face value but a statement by z on corruption it appears to me that this is a big problem now whether the problem in india is bigger whether the problem in china is bigger we don't seem to know but the people in china and india know and uh, as i said it will all depend on uh, what the people tell us in both countries in november hmm. okay and my last question to you and this is about india you know post doklam and everything else that is going on in ladakh there is a general a uh, wave of rejecting chinese goods and you know anti china let's not do this etc what should indian politicians businessmen and the citizens be doing you know to be able to use your words tame china from an indian perspective okay <laughs> there can be two approaches yeah. either you say that yes we should have friendly talks with china and uh, we should continue our relations because we get a lot of cheap products right from china mm. and whether if we stop taking those cheap products whether our economy uh, will take uh, hit and same thing applies to the united states it is not as if in united states they can easily replace the chinese part of the production mm. so again these are complicated thing but i have my faith in the past mm. what does the past say the past says that uh, america is a very powerful country correct and it's a very powerful country intellectually mm. when america decided that china must go on the top china went on the top in 25 years against 2000 years earlier mm. when china and india were at par america decided that china should go on top Mm-hmm. good reason or bad reason for in china went to top today it appears that that is not the feeling in uh, america and therefore america will get hit let me uh, go to another period mm-hmm. japan was always uh, friendly with the united states and you remember the wars in 1904 etc when japan defeated a number of countries in asia and they became a favorite of uh, the united states in united states held them and then suddenly came pearl harbor mm. americans did not forget pearl harbor mm-hmm. and the uh, the japanese paid for the pearl harbor when the small bomb and the big bomb were put on nagasaki in hiroshima yes. the feeling was so strong on both sides that after the first bomb was uh, dropped mm. japan did not did not end the war they were still fighting and the second bomb had to be dropped so <clears throat> then you look at all the plaza accords all the petroleum trade etc mm-hmm. etc usa is still predominates all the business mm-hmm. so and then look at look at russia the entire soviet bloc was finished by the united states without firing a single bullet right so the power of the americans is immense mm. but even then many times china had to help america during this limited 25 year period when america was helping china to go forward and 
it would china had to help america in pursuing a number of its policy objectives so mm-hmm. today if the democratic world sides with america mm-hmm. it can fight uh, china sure. whether it would fight china or not after november is still to be seen so in this divided world today each country is divided the yes. groups are divided the politics are divided what will uh, happen cannot be clearly stated but china does not seem to have an advantage today chinese had this advantage normally if a country overtakes another country mm. powerful country the powerful country kills this country which is trying to overtake mm. but united states helped china overtake uh, the united states mm. in terms of gdp and ppp terms mm. and now there are many calculations which say that Uh, china will be 50% of the world gdp if the present growth rates continue so these issues are all being debated today yesterday they were not being debate, debated obama and china were partners hmm. so they were not being debated now with all these issues being debated today it's a more difficult time for china so one more follow up question as as you were talking i was thinking if you were to think of the world as you know one large group of people with a head table where the leaders sit the center of the head table has traditionally been the us president do you think china has the ability to be take over the role as the leader sitting at the center of the head table of the world well if you take the performance of 25 years this 25 years the answer is yes but uh, the 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 future cannot be determined by 25 years there's a 2000 year period also uh, to be seen mm. then it, this figure is not per gdp but per capita this figure is total gdp sure. so it will have to be seen but if you look at intellectual power mm. which should determine the world future mm. the intellectual power is not yet in the hands of uh, china it is still in the hands of the united states it has a very strong intellectual power also because of the immigrants because they choose their immigrants very carefully they use their immigrants very carefully and if you look at all the heads of the american corporations yeah they're all not sir immigrants yeah. and a uh, major part of them in this business which will determine the world's future the business of ir3 ir4 ir5 lots of uh, them are indian i was reading somewhere what is ir6 industrial revolution 6 and then someone answered in some book someone answered that ir6 is interplanetary okay <laughs> if ir6 is interplanetary because uh, our elon musk etc are saying interplanetary travel and uh, and also so many things interplanetary even there very surprisingly that business is also digital right. and in that business also india seems to be doing extremely well absolutely right and therefore all this will determine the future of the world this vegel it has been such a fascinating three episodes of discussions with you thank you so much for sharing your perspectives and i'm sure all the listeners and viewers are going to enjoy every word that you have spoken thank you very much and i wish you good health and lots more writing then everyone needs good health in these days of corona in the days of corona yes thank you thank, thank, you. thank you so much you. thank you for listening to the brand called you video cast and podcast a platform that brings you knowledge experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called you.